So, welcome back to another teacher talk. In this time, we have all the elective teachers with us, or, uh, like, more of the performing arts and uh, more, like, special electives, I'd say. So, uh, we'll jump straight into the questions. So, first is, are you a performing artist, or do the skill that you teach outside of school? Yes, when a gig comes my way, um, and uh, if I have time... And and if I'm available, I'll take a gig. Um, but recently, because of the coronavirus, no one's able to perform. But before the coronavirus, I was performing. I was taking a few gigs um, as a performer. My focus is usually in pottery and ceramics, which we don't do in school, but I also do painting on the side. Oh, cool. Okay. Miss um, Karaganis? Um, I... I have not actually been performing for about three or four years since I had, I have small children. I have a two-year-old and a four-year-old. But before that, before I had them, um, one of my latest projects, I was in a Johnny Cash cover band and I played June Carter. And during the summer and winter break and things like that, I traveled all over the United States and performed with my auto harp as June Carter in a Johnny Cash cover band, and I did that with my husband who played guitar, and it was really fun. But oh, I have been uh, not doing that for the last couple of years. Oh, that sounds very interesting. That's really cool. Yeah. But I missed uh, Bashi. All right, so I teach computer science and robotics, and um, on my f if I have time, I do some, like, uh, programming on the side. I do, like, web development, um, creating websites and things like that. So... If you look at Hale's Steam website, I created it, so that would be like a sample uh, work for me. It also sounds really interesting. Okay. So, am I next? Yeah. So I teach dance and theater, and you can always see me dancing with my husband in my kitchen. <laughs> so if it's been a hard day, he'll come home and he goes, oh, you know what, we better dance for a few minutes. <laughs> We'll dance in the kitchen, but um, we also take lessons and do some ballroom dance. I was on the ballroom dance team when I was in college, and my major was musical theater. And like Miss Kiraganis, I toured the United States in many shows doing musical theater. And when my family started coming along, even my oldest children were in shows with me that we did when I did Annie and Annie Get Your Gun and. And then it got to be harder to have the family do it. It's a hard life to do working every night and doing a family, but we always do a little bit together somehow. We go to nursing homes and sing to the people who are there or try to take our talents in. And now my grandchildren are doing it. They play their violin, they go with us and sing to people in convalescent homes. So we try to keep it going a little bit. That sounds uh, also really nice. But aren't you also the theater teacher now? I am. I am. So you all, so that's also how I incorporate with your theater, right? Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Now some of my dancers are choreographing a few numbers for our, our theater. So we'll see how we do that online. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right. So uh, next uh, question is, what inspired you or who inspired you to uh, do like what you do? That would have to be all of my teachers. Um, it would have to be all of my teachers, especially uh, teachers that were actual teachers, not just professional musicians. Um, you know, I would tell them the stories that I would have about teaching or the, the troubles I'd have when I was teaching. And, they would, and a lot of people were supportive and told me, you know what, you, you'd be a really good teacher. You know, you keep asking a lot of good questions. So you might want to explore that avenue of music uh, becoming a teacher. I had two of the best art teachers when I was in high school and they convinced me to keep going. And then the whole time from the summer after 11th grade through college, I ran a summer art program at a sleepaway camp. So I did that for two months every summer and I tried other jobs, but I always went back to teaching. Uh, it sounds really nice. Cool. So for me, um, my parents said that I came out singing and um, I sang my entire childhood and 
my parents were really supportive. They're also both um, like side musicians. And they took me around to many different auditions and things when I was really little. And then I had a great middle school choir teacher who really believed in me and encouraged me to do auditions and help me outside of school with auditions. And then I had the same thing happen in high school. I had a very, very encouraging um, choral teacher that really encouraged me and, and um, helped me outside of class with my audition pieces. And it just became just became so much of who I was by the end of high school, my junior and senior year, that everybody on campus knew that I was going to go be a performer. So, um, so I studied opera in college, and and uh, and then became a music teacher. I just knew that teaching and music were going to be my lifelong loves, and that's what I'm doing. Okay, that also sounds uh, very interesting. My turn? Yeah. All right, so I took a uh, class in high school, a programming class. That was about 22, three years ago, and computer science was totally different. I took a Q-basic programming class, and I really loved it. Um, I, I got high grades in that, and my teacher was like, this is something probably you want to do in the future. And, and I have a brother who is really good at computer programming, so he also encouraged me and helped me a lot. So I um, took some more classes and I um, did um, computer engineering for my bachelor's degree. And then I got my master's in computer science and I love it. Also uh, very interesting. My name is Ball. So I grew up in a home where we played a lot of music and this will tell you how old I am because we used to have records that we would play. And my parents, when I was just tiny, would play records over and over and we would just keep playing them and singing as a family. And then um, they were never professionals, but we always had a lot of music in the home. And my parents got me involved in tap lessons and dancing and I loved it. So when I got into school in theater, I loved musical theater. I loved the dancing, singing, acting, and that's kind of the way I went. I had a fabulous teacher that gave us an opportunity to do all different kinds of shows. And then when I went into college, I thought, oh, what do I want to be? I almost went into nursing, but I loved the entertainment and so much that I went into that. But there were so many weird people in entertainment and I go, oh my gosh, I want to show them that regular people can go into this major also. And um, I just had so much fun. I really did. It was like a family and I danced during high school and did a lot of ballroom dance and just enjoyed that and took it on from there. Yeah, that's also uh, really interesting. Okay, so next question I have is how has the pandemic changed your electives? Um, it's definitely more difficult, but um, it, it's, it doesn't mean that because it's more difficult that the subject is now obsolete or invalid. Um, what I'm really grateful for with the way things are going is that I'm able to teach a lot of the things that we don't have time to do in our electives. So typically when we're in my classroom, we're usually getting ready for the next concert or the next performance. Uh, but because performing is not something that's going to happen soon, we're able to focus more on music theory, uh, focus a lot on the composition side, the more creative side of creating music. Yeah. Um, uh, what else? We're also able to focus on um, uh, just developing more of the fundamentals that the kids need and the students need so that when they get back to actually playing together in the classroom, whether it's next year or in the future, they have those skills to be able to play well. So we're not losing any time, we're not losing any ground. Um, the only unfortunate part is that we don't get to play instruments side by side or together or perform live music, which is obviously a lot easier. But um, yeah. given the so situation that we're in, uh, we're still able to provide I'm still able to provide students the fundamentals and the skills they need to be able to perform later together. Yeah. Uh, for me, um, I 
have some of the same students that I had last year and the year before, and they know that I am not a big fan of computers at all, and I barely know how to use them. So this has been especially challenging. Uh, Ms. Dabashi has helped me a lot because every time I have a question, I email her and she always tells me what to do. Um, trying to do visual arts on the computer and not knowing what supplies my students have at home is the hardest part. So yeah. I have to rearrange everything so that they can do it with just a pencil and paper if they have nothing else. Oh, for me, um, I would say it's a mixed bag. There's been lots of things that I've learned that when we do go back in person, I will continue with the technology that I have learned um, in this situation. And I know the kids have learned a lot. Um, there's all kinds of resources out there that I didn't even know existed. Um, but as far as like the actual performance and connecting with an audience part, which is one of the biggest things we work towards all year, that's not really happening. So that's been a big, um, that's been a big hurdle for all of us to kind of make peace with and my, myself and um, our stu my students. Um, and knowing that what we're doing is okay and what we are doing is going to take a lot longer. So um, the projects that we do do and some of the things that we are still carrying over from the classroom are just taking twice as long. It's just the way it is. So for example, my piano elective, I used to be able to go through and check everybody's hands and listen to a piece within 10 minutes. And now it takes me like 45 minutes to get through each kid to get the camera on and yeah. make sure their hands are in the right spot and listen, like be doing both at the same time. So it's been really, really challenging um, in some regards too. But again, I think it's a mixed bag. I, I've learned a lot and trying to take those positives with me in the future. Yeah, I get that. All right, so for me, um, I had a good experience actually. Um, since everything's virtual, there are things we can do that we could not do before. Like I was able to participate in a uh, professional development with the MIT and uh, Amazon Future Engineer Program who are all out of state. If it wasn't virtual, I couldn't do it. And I was able to bring a lot of resources to my class. Um, as far as my students, they're doing fine. Um, I had to send some supplies home. For example, my robotics team had to come and pick up their, their uh, robotics field and set it up in their garage so they can participate in a virtual uh, robotics challenge. But um, for the most part, it's been a positive experience. The only thing uh, I'm missing is just seeing my students face to face, being in, in my classroom, um, the social aspect of it. But other than that, um, it's going fine. So I'm, yeah, I'm I feel enjoying like doing something new. I feel like uh, when you're doing a lot of things on uh, computers, anyways, for your elective, like for coding and stuff, it would anyways be a lot easier to do it online because you're you're still using your own computers and stuff. Okay, as um, well. So it definitely has been a learning curve. I'm like Mr. Sonderling, I'm not the best on the computer, but I've learned a lot and I've shown my students that I'm a lifelong learner also. As far as dance goes, it's really hard. I have some students who are in tiny apartments and they're trying to dance and do leaps and it, it limits them to what they can do. And some of my students are shy to do it in front of their parents where I think they would do more if they were in our beautiful dance room or on the stage. So that is tough, that's hard. And there's something exciting about a live audience, whether it be your classmates or your teacher cheering you on when you're dancing or doing theater. So we, we miss that live element, but we've been able to learn how to do some things on Zoom. It's hard because they hear the music different in different places we lag, but um, you know what? We're all doing the best we can do under the circumstances. So yeah. we love what we're learning, but um, still we'll be excited when we can get back and maybe do some things live. Yeah. Okay, so uh, next question is like, how do all of you collaborate? So like, for example, m maybe like 
Miss Ball and Miss uh, uh, Miss Ball and Miss Carraganis or Miss Carraganis and Mr. Cruz, they do like a collaboration with their two classes. So how do you all collab uh, collaborate if you like uh, through these times or even back in school? How would you guys collaborate? I collaborate a lot with Mrs. Carrigan as the choir teacher because she's also a music teacher. Makes sense. And um, yeah, but as far as the um, as far as when we when I collaborate with Miss Ball um, or the art teachers or any of the other elective teachers, we're always collaborating on more creative ways to make our class um, our classrooms more interesting to make our content more interesting and accessible to our students because everybody needs the arts. Um, in some form yeah. or another, and um, even if Miss Ball hasn't a, a, a good idea, I can always find a way to apply it to my class. Or if Mr. Yeah. Rios or uh, Mr. Sondling has a good idea, I always find a way to kind of make it my own and apply it to my class. I know for me, since I'm visual arts, uh, there are some of the sixth grade teachers who teach sixth grade visual arts also. So we collaborate together. And then as a team, we work together when we have our electives meeting because everybody brings something different to the table. So we all work together with that, with the visual or the uh, online learning. When we started that, when we had our first team meetings, we kind of let Ms. Debashi and Mr. Mooney's takeover, and they were showing us a lot of things that we did not know how to do. So I'd say within our whole team, even though we all do something totally different, we all bring something to the table and we've been helping each other out a lot. Yeah. I don't have really too much to add to what Mr. Sonderling said, just exactly what he said. We, we all have very different disciplines. So it makes it more challenging than maybe like perhaps the English department or math department where they have some common things that they're teaching within each grade. Um, we all have very different subjects, but like Mr. Sullivan said, we do have common things, especially like with the distance learning when that happens, how do we do this on Schoology? How do we do this on our on email or whatever um, that we came together for? And generally in person too, we also would have our VAPA showcase and things like that, that we would be working towards together. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay. Yeah, so uh, again, the same thing, uh, Mr. Sonderling and Ms. Carrigan has said, same thing for me, but uh, I just wanna give you an example of um, how the electives department collaborated for last year's um, virtual graduation. So they were, they, I was in charge of putting the video together and I reached out to different teachers in the electives department and they were awesome. They got me like songs for the graduation, um, the national anthem, and um, you know, they were able to just work together to uh, create just a great experience. It was our first time doing a virtual graduation, so we had no experience, but I think uh, we, we worked really well together to just uh, create that experience for our students. Yeah. So we're always working together and trying to help one another. That's the neat thing about being elective groups together. For instance, Mr. Sonderling, when we came up with a theme for our performances, um, Ms. Kiraganis and I, he was so supportive and had his art students do beautiful backgrounds that we could put on the walls. And we always try to be thoughtful of one another because we need different things to perform and doing things. And so we're always giving and taking and trying to help each other do better. So that's the neat thing about the teachers at Hale. Ms. Debachi helped me put together my dance numbers and made it possible so that we could get it out for other people to see. So we're always working together and trying to help one another. Uh, Ms. Kiraganis found out some things online and shared them with the rest of us. Mr. Sonderling does that. We're always Mr. Cruz. We always want to try to help each other be the best we can be. And that's the neat thing. We're good. We're good friends, good teachers that support one another. Yeah. Okay, so now I'm going to, the other questions are with my uh, other reporter, Josh. 
Alrighty, so now I'm going to be asking you guys some, like, fun, silly questions. So the first question I'm going to ask is, like, what do you guys do in your free time? Um, it's pretty hard to come by these days. <laughs> if, I, if I have any free time, it's usually, I'm usually exercising. Um, I, have, I, I have a mountain bike and I hit the trail after school. Um, but other than that, free time is kind of hard to come across um, these days. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't have a better answer. Yeah, it's, no, it's all good. Fine. It makes sense. Yeah. In my free time, I do a lot of baking and gardening. Those are my two main things. This sounds, sounds pretty fun. Do you ever do anything with Mysterios for uh, gardening? I have not mm -hmm. yet. Okay. I have not. I um I currently don't have free time because I have young children. <laughs> I'm sure it'll come back at some point and I will get back to reading and gardening and things like that. But right now I chase children around my house. <laughs> yeah, it's the same thing for me. When you say free time, I was like, what free time? I have a six-year-old and a two-year-old that are like all over the place and I, they, I barely have free time but if I do have free time I love reading, um, I love shopping so um, that's uh, pretty much what I do. Uh, I also like to learn about new technology so if I, if I have free time like when I go to bed at night and I have maybe like 10-15 minutes I just read articles about new technology that is out and that's my passion. That sounds good. I've seen Miss Debachi out shopping, so I know she likes to shop. <laughs> I um, don't have a lot of free time, and I should because my kids are all raised, but I now I worry about grandchildren and calling children. I love to cook also. I love to uh, make things for my family and learn new things that way. That's always exciting. I love to travel, so if there's ever any time it's just so fun to travel. And one other passion I have is um, genealogy, family history. I love to find out about my roots and stories about people, what they went through, hardships and making it. And that makes me think, you know what? I can get over this COVID. Look what they had to go through to survive. And I love finding out. I have a big book I put together of stories of my ancestors. And sometimes when I feel sorry for myself. I read their stories and it gives me strength just knowing what I came from. All right. Um, I have one last question. Um, is there anything that you wish you have known as a first year teacher? Oh, man. There's a lot of things I wish I knew. Um, I, I kind of just learned them along the way. And, you know, um, I like to think that I'm a fast learner, so I just don't make a big deal out of it. Um, I guess it's, uh, I guess it would be very community specific. Um, I've taught at another, I used to teach high school before teaching middle school. So, um, and I used to teach high school in a different uh, neighborhood, a different area that was not here in the Valley. So, um, yeah. I, you know, if I had to, if I really had to pin it down to some, to one thing, it would have to be more about the, just more about the neighborhood and the community, um, being able to, to get more knowledge about that so that I could teach better to the students that I have in front of me. Yeah. That sounds really good. <laughs> um, stress management. Because being online is a whole different kind of stress than anything I've experienced in all of my years in the classroom. I agree. Oh my gosh, there's so much. I don't even know where to start. Um, can you come back to me? <laughs> yeah. There's so much. Okay. Yeah, so I started as a math teacher um, and I, I've never went to school in America. I, I went to school in a different country, which is absolutely different from what is here. So I wish like I knew more about how school system works in America when I started teaching math. But um, I've learned a lot since, since then. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe to not be so hard on myself and to just you know, learn to 
it's all okay. It's going to be just fine. You don't have to do it all at once. I think I tried to do too much at once and to save all my students, and I, I can't do that. But I kept trying to, and I probably will continue to try to, but just to know that um, you just do the best you can. You need to set limits, and you need family time. It can't be all school, and you have to have balance. And that was hard for me to learn is balance. Um, yeah. I'm just going to piggyback on what Ms. Ball said. I think that was probably one of my biggest lessons was just management of time. I spent um, in my first couple years of teaching, I would spend half a Saturday and all day Sunday getting ready for my teaching week. And, um, and then I just over the years learned to scale it back more and more. And obviously, as you get more experience, you learn more things and you have stuff in your bag of tricks that you can pull from. Um, where in the beginning, you're kind of inventing the wheel constantly. So um, I was able to scale back on that. And that was really, um, really hard. So uh, that would be my biggest, biggest thing as a first year teacher. Thank you guys so much for joining us for this episode yeah. of um, Hail News. Thank, Thank you all for, for uh, coming us. out.